In this episode of Every Effect Explained, we're going to be finishing off the Film Impact Effects section with the Tools Effect. Now, there's only three in here, but they're pretty useful. The first one is the Auto Align Effects. If I apply this onto this logo layer and go to the Effect Controls panel, I have the Horizontal and Vertical Alignment Controls. So we can do Left Aligned, Top Left, Center Left, Bottom Left, and you get the point Bottom Right. This can be useful for this sort of thing. You can increase or decrease the scale. And you can also add a little bit of offset if you wanted to adjust things a little bit. We can also select this text detection button. We get a couple different options. So we have left alignment, right alignment. We have line bias. And you can even attach it to the alignment of another layer. So if I choose video layer one, how I aligned the other one, it will sort of attach the two together. And also if I have that video two connected to video one and I go back to video one and I move it, you'll notice video two stays connected with it. So you can group adjust things and make sure they stick together. The next one we have is the channel mix effect. Now stuff like this has been available in the Lumetri and the color correction sort of but it's always useful to have a channel mixer tool. This allows you to adjust the red, green, blue, and alpha values. So the alpha is like the entire shape of the layer. This one's a full screen, so we're just dimming it all out. The blue channel, you can decrease the, the green, just leave the red. Or you also have the option to adjust in HSV modes, which is like hue saturation. So I can cycle through the entire hue wheel in this way or YUV, which is the luminance and chrominance, which is sort of like the brightness and saturation of different things. So why might you want to do this? Let's say you do just want to isolate the red color channel for some reason. And I don't know, I'll duplicate the layer, maybe move it over a little bit and then isolate the blue color channel. And then I could put that on screen or something, get this cool red, green, blue splitting effect, even though that's already built into as we saw a previous effect. But there's also practical reasons you might want to isolate and adjust a certain channel. Definitely look into color theory if you want to learn more about what all of these values mean and how they combine luminance, chrominance. And again, there's always multiple ways to do something. For example, there's the invert effect built into Premiere, but also if you ever go to your curve section and you just flip the curves upside down, that also will invert your red, green, blue channel, but also in the curve section, you can just invert one color channel or play around with one color channel as well. Again, a little bit out of the scope of this video, but it's always good to have flexibility on individual parameters like this to expand the possibilities. Lastly and thirdly in here, we have the clone effects tool. This one's a really cool one. So in this case, we have this Premiere logo. I'm gonna open the pre-transform, which has always been pretty useful when dealing with stuff that might be too big initially. I'll pre-transform scale it down so we don't get any of that clipping. And in here you have just a bunch of different options. So you have one clone, two layers of clones. This is symmetrical cloning. That's why it's giving us top, right, left, and bottom. But if you wanted, you can just do, you know, cloning to the left and right. You can adjust the spacing of them, the anchor point, and you have all sorts of adjustments. So like rotation, which can be really useful for creating animations. And you'll see in the transitions portion of this playlist, some of the transitions do similar stuff like this. I could just add a keyframe at the start of the clip at a certain parameter, and then I could move forward in the clip and change that parameter as the clip moves forward. So I can adjust the horizontal or vertical shift. And you can really get a large amount of customizable motion graphics and animations that are possible right within Premiere Pro. That are possible right within Premiere Pro. You see this is playing back very smoothly. And again, if you make one that you specifically like that certain clone effect, you can right click and save a certain type of clone effect as a preset. You see some of these are a little bit less opaque than others. That's this fall off scale and fall off alpha. So the scale is the size of it sort of, and the alpha, as we mentioned earlier, is transparency or opaqueness of the overall shape of the layer. It's just a really fun effect that I'm showing you with a logo. You can do it with text or other objects and graphics. That finishes up the four folders in the effects panel. And in the next videos of this series, we're gonna be going into the film impact transitions, which there's really a lot and a lot of cool ones in there. So check out the playlist and subscribe to stay tuned for future videos. My name is Justin Odisho. Thanks for watching.